Welcome back to the Noon Report. We have so much video that we didn't get to show you and a lot of Sky Spy pictures from Dickinson of the damage that we wanted to have a little special weather segment here for you. Let's go first to the video shot. Just this morning, Andrew Keller was in the air looking out over damaged parts of Dickinson this morning. Um, not sure if it's tornadoes or not. The National Weather Service will have to determine that. People in Dickinson who are affected are saying, yeah, they were tornadoes. Yeah, Your professional opinion as a meteorologist? Well, I've been listening to uh, reports from our Sky Spies that I have been forwarding to the Weather Service because it is valuable information for them as well. And uh, there have been many reports of funnel clouds. A lot of people who had weather call got the call that there was a tornado warning last night. And as soon as that tornado warning went off, they were telling me that they were seeing funnel clouds. So um, there, there were funnel clouds about the time the tornado warning went off. And uh, just looking at some of this video from the air, with the, with the damage being spread around in all different directions and not in, uh, you know, all bent over and pushed the same way, it does appear that it, it looks like tornadic type of damage. Uh, but again, I, I haven't been there yet, so I can't right. say We're that. Right, just looking at pictures. It's just my own personal, you know, Straight professional. Straight line winds, though, you think would be more. And, and that's wondering. what the Weather Service looks for. They look for damage paths and, and how things lay down. And it's, again, it's just my own professional opinion uh, and thoughts about what that is. It's not the official say, which right. is, you know, will come from the Weather Service later on today. But it, it does it's suspicious of, of tornado damage. How long does it take for them to make a determination like this? You said later today you think they'll have an answer already? Uh, they're sending a team out there uh, this afternoon mm -hmm. if they're not already mm -hmm. on, en route. Um, it could take them a day or two, but uh, with them being out there today and seeing the damage that I saw, uh, and they'll, probably, they'll obviously see more than what we've seen today, uh, I, I think that they should have an assessment today, if not early tomorrow. Just a, a huge, powerful storm. It's absolutely amazing to me that no one was hurt. It really is, considering the damage and some mm -hmm. of the photos that we have. And we'll show you some of these photos. They are absolutely unbelievable. And they're coming in very fast, almost so fast that we can't even get onto the website to get them on the web for We've you. got some very dedicated Sky Spies, and we thank you all for that. Let's look at some of those pictures now, Charles, and maybe you can just kind of talk us through what we think we're seeing here. Well, <laughs> this, this photo, I've been showing all morning. This came in late last night uh, while Kevin and I were here in the wee hours of the morning. And uh, this is why we tell people to leave campers and leave mobile homes when there are tornadoes because, as you can see, I mean, they're not built very strong no, to begin no, they're with. They, they're meant to be towed by a truck, so they have to be rather light. And uh, this is exactly why we tell you to abandon those structures because not only can they get uh, destroyed with falling debris, but they can also. Uh, get picked up rather easily with you know tornadic winds or even severe mm -hmm. downburst and thunderstorm winds. So that is a good example why. And uh, yeah. these these pictures of these brick buildings that are you know almost completely destroyed are, are remarkable. And it does take some very powerful winds to do this. Uh, in this picture, you can see the trees facing away from us. It's blown down away from us. But in the background, the trees are blown you know, kind of to the right there. So that's kind of indicative of some different kind of motions. And they're uprooted. You can actually see the yes. roots. It's not just like branches it are didn't, ripped off. Yeah, it didn't help that the ground was completely saturated mm -hmm. from the very heavy rains, a lot of trees. I think we've got a wider angle of this. I mean, you can see how wow. large these trees are. And they were just completely uprooted in uh, South Dickinson yesterday and just portions of office buildings just being completely torn off. It will be interesting to see in this picture, you know, it's wow. absolutely devastating, you know, to think of, you know, this family having to try to recover. But it is amazing that absolutely nobody was injured yeah. or killed and, for that matter. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic news. Mm -hmm. Interesting how it's just one part of town, too. Yes. And, and that's also a little bit indicative of possible, of possible tornado damage. Uh, again, the Weather Service will be making their official assessment. Uh, they'll start making it as soon as they get to Dickinson. They should have an official, uh, uh, an official statement about that either today or tomorrow. And uh, this video actually captured by Andrew Keller before, or, yeah, before the tornadoes came into Dickinson. This was about 15 miles north of Dickinson. And uh, I was looking at this all morning, and it does appear that you can see the wall cloud is rotating, and it is pretty close to the ground. It's hard to tell if this is a tornado or not because it is so dark uh, and there's a lot of rain. But just looking at this and, and going over what I learned you know, to get my degree and all the storm spotter training that I've taken over the years, it does look like 
a tornado in that video right there. So certainly uh, a very interesting weather night. We're glad to hear that everybody's okay. And uh, we do want to bring up one other thing. People that did have weather call, they did get the warnings for tornadoes, uh, but uh, there was a bit of a glitch. There was a corrupted file with one of the severe thunderstorm warnings. That has been tested. It's been fixed. Weather call is working 100% perfectly now. Good. Hopefully we don't need it for a while. I hope we don't <laughs> need it. I, I'd like to get some sleep. <laughs> Absolutely. We will be right back with more of the Noon Report. Unfortunately, because of all our severe weather coverage and the pictures that we wanted to get, make sure you saw, we don't have time to show you Mr. Food. If you'd like more information on today's recipe, make sure you check out our website. We will find the recipe there. Mr. Food will be back tomorrow, barring any more tornadoes or and straight think, line winds. I think we'll be okay for the time being. It'll be a little windy today, but nothing like we saw last night. We'll get a good break through the weekend as well. Okay, sounds good. And we have a couple of crews in Dickinson today and Williston as well where there was storm damage over the evening. Last night we'll have full reports from those areas for you tonight. And in the meantime, check out our website. Check out all those Sky Spy photos. Thanks for being with us. Coming up on the evening report, when twisters hit populated areas, the damage can be extensive. Dickinson was the unlucky city. It's never too soon to start contacting your insurance agent, and there are certain things you should not forget. And tornadoes struck rural areas as well. We'll give you a look. You're watching the evening report at 6 on NBC North Dakota News, your news leader. Good evening, I'm Monica Hannon. Thanks for joining us tonight. Alan is at the Backyard Barbecue and he will join us in just a few minutes. But before then, we have a lot to talk about following last night's severe weather. While it was dark last night, we'd been telling you about severe storm damage in Dickinson, as well as a temporary evacuation. By dawn's light, the extent of the damage was clear, and now it has been confirmed it was a tornado that hit. The governor arrived in Dickinson along with the National Guard. Andrew Keller shows us the damage. A very sobering and somber scene on Dickinson's south side. The video speaks for itself. We were at church. We came home and everybody said it was a twister. And so all three power lines are down. Our garage is gone. Our laundry room's gone. The roof's gone on the other side. Pieces of the apartment over there flew into the other side of our house and knocked the side of the house out. Gallipo's home is one of the many that were completely demolished. Evidence of the strong force. Jeanette Valeski recalls hearing the sirens and then the sounds of the storm. Well, it was very scary, very spooky. I mean, we just heard, you know, the loud roars and everything. From up in the air, the uh, damage is evident. You can see where houses are completely, the roofs are completely torn off. They're completely demolished. It's uh, quite astounding how much damage there was last night. To not have a fatality or at this point, uh, a significant injury is, is truly remarkable. And so again, I, I think our people are heads up. They took the proper precaution. In a press conference, the governor, along with Major General Dave Sprincinatic, Dickinson City Administrator Sean Kessel, and Stark County Emergency Manager Brent Pringle say the city was well prepared. The National Guard will be in Dickinson for at least the next couple of days, guarding and cordoning off the area as the cleanup process begins. For Gerald Olickson, who came home to trees resting on both his camper and his home. This be a big cleanup. Okay. To those who had their homes completely wiped away. It's a little bit overwhelming, but I'm thankful that my whole family is alive and well. That's all that matters. People are taking comfort in that. In Dickinson, I'm Andrew Keller, NBC North Dakota News. Power has been restored to all but 250 people. However, some homes may not be habitable. City and state officials held a press conference just a short time ago in Dickinson. Our Retha Kalklazer has been there all day. She joins us to talk about the task ahead. Retha? Well, Monica, city inspectors have been through about 60 homes on the south side of Dickinson. They're going through them one by one to determine if they're still safe for people to, be, to live in. 20 homes have been deemed uninhabitable. Despite all of the property damage, city officials in Dickinson say they're amazed at how few injuries there were. The hospital treated and released just two people with tornado-related injuries. Of course, that could have been a lot worse. Part of the city is shut down except the people who live there. It's an area on the south side of town, and National Guardsmen are patrolling that area for safety. There's still a lot of work to be done in Dickinson. 
Those who are clearing tree debris are being told to put it on the curb and separate the brush from the stump if possible. City crews hope to begin cleaning that up by Saturday earlier if they can. Homeowners with damages damage are eligible for FEMA assistance under the existing disaster declaration. A disaster recovery center will be up and running by tomorrow in the mall in Dickinson. About 200 homes are still without power. Of course, that's down from the 250 this morning, and those should be coming online block by block later tonight. 50 National Guardsmen are already in town. Another 50 are going to be coming from Dickinson and Williston. They should be here in the near future. Um, they'll be here as long as needed. Monica. All right. Now, Rita, you've been there all day. You've been taking pictures to show us what the damage looks like. You'll have those available for us on the night report. Is that right? Yep. I will be back and have some video and things to show you at 10 o'clock about how the city is starting to recover. All right. Thanks a lot, Rita. Safe travels. Thank you. Homeowners are also trying to get back to normal in Dickinson, but it's going to take some time for residents in the south part of the city. High winds damaged numerous homes, as we heard, and also businesses. Some lost their roofs and some lost walls. Upturned trees also landed on homes, causing even more damage. But it's uh, too early for insurance agents to put a number on how much damage that storm caused. They say claims have already been pouring in, and while adjusters are getting out as fast as they can, agents say homeowners should start doing what they can now. You know you're going to need a contractor if your roof is off, so start lining up contractors, make the calls, get them lined up. They're going to be very busy. Um, water damage, start, you know, tear up your carpet, get somebody over there to extract the water if possible. Get a hold of the local, you know, water removal guys. He says homeowners who start making temporary repairs should save all of their receipts because those repair costs are often reimbursable. And he says not to take any chances with safety. If your home or garage looks unstable, don't go inside to try to get something out. While we've been awaiting for official verification on whether it was a tornado that hit Dickinson last night, there were several other tornadoes that were confirmed near the Canadian border. And of course that uh, that one that went through Dickinson has been confirmed as a tornado now. Those other uh, tornadoes near Porto, the two firefighters say they drove away from a tornado that blew out their back windows. Tornadoes also hit near Northgate and Sherwood. Jennifer Schwan has more. The town of Sherwood sits close to the Canadian border. And last night, the town was in close vicinity no, of thunderstorms County, and tornadoes. tornadoes. Reported down near Powers Lake, uh, Northgate, Sherwood. Just like night, they were dark. They were, I haven't seen any clouds like that for a while. One of those clouds turned out to be a tornado that was spotted a few miles west of Sherwood. I heard the deputy sheriff say something about Ben's at Keith's, so I get on the phone and called my cousins east of town and they had no damage there, so I figured, well, it's got to be me. Farmer Steve Keith has a farm in the western part of Sherwood and has lived through tornadoes before. Three times this yard has been damaged with high winds or tornadoes. When Keith headed to his farm this morning, he found three wheat bins thrown to the ground and a tree tipped over. Somewhere in the seven to $10,000, I suppose. Keith has already called his insurance company, but says that it won't cover all the damage. I'll never get back what things are worth. As a farmer, Keith relies on storage bins to hold his wheat until he sells it. You lose 8,000 bushels of storage, and today's prices, you're looking at two bucks a bushel for storage, so that'd be $16,000 to replace that. He's already counting the cost, but for now, Keith will spend most of the next few days just cleaning up. In Sherwood, Jennifer Schwan, NBC, North Dakota News. In northern Burke County, there were reports of downed power lines, damaged oil storage tanks, a destroyed barn, and a destroyed granary. There was also a report of a tornado just west of Williston last night. One building at Stallion Oil Field Services, which housed expensive equipment, was severely damaged. No employees were in the building at the time of the tornado's touchdown. Um, picked up the building and lifted it up and kind of basically tipped it over and top of a bunch of heavy equipment, a bunch of loaders and generators of ours and touched down out in the field behind us and then picked straight up and left. Teller needs to evaluate how much it will cost to replace the building and some of the equipment, but he's estimating damages to be around two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. All that brings us to Kevin Lawrence, who's outside tonight, where the sun finally is shining. Kevin. 
Monica, it's nice to get out and enjoy the weather for once. Yesterday, of course, in the first one forecast center covering the storms nonstop. Tonight, we're actually able to take a break and enjoy the weather. Lots of sunshine, dry air has moved in, and temperatures in the lower 80s in many areas. But let's go back to the weather at hand that we had last night. And I want to show you a series of Sky Spy photos. This one from Pat Whitlock of Bismarck, a storm chaser who caught this wall cloud just west of Medora. And this, you'll see the Sky Spy slideshow move along. Look at all of the damage. We're moving them on quickly because we have so many photos to pass along. Many of these are on our website. Make sure you check that out and unfortunate damage that we had here on the south side of Dickinson on either side of Highway 22. It was a tornado, an EF3 on the enhanced Fujita scale. That means winds were right around 150 miles per hour as that storm came through Dickinson. The sirens were blaring in Dickinson and our weather call subscribers got the tornado warning. Over 100 subscribers, about 110 subscribers, got the warning in Dickinson. For weather call, log on our websites for more on that. Radar and satellite, mostly sunny skies heading into the early evening. A few clouds north of Williston, maybe a light shower, but there is no severe weather expected for tonight. Where are we temperature wise? Hey, how about 79 in the capital city, Mobridge? 80 degrees, 74 in Garrison and in Dickinson, 73 in Williston. We might dip into the upper 40s for overnight lows. What about the wind with the dry air moving in from the west? We've got west winds right now between 10 and 20 miles per hour over most of the first warm viewing area. Williston, west winds at 20, southwest at 18 in Minot, Bismarck at 15, west winds at 15 in Hedinger and in Buffalo. All right, we'll put our weather in motion, and as we advance this, watch what happens tonight or shall I say lack thereof. A break in the action tomorrow. We'll have increasing clouds, still a fair amount of sunshine, however, and we might see a few light rain showers, but you know, it's not going to be anything to worry about as far as severe weather. That unfortunately will return by early next week. Another round of severe storms, but not for the next several days, not through the upcoming weekend. So your first one forecast. Let's start with tonight in Minot and Bismarck with overnight lows under dry conditions in the lower 50s. Minot 52, Williston or Bismarck rather at 53 west winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. For Williston and Dickinson, maybe upper 40s for overnight lows. A partly cloudy to mostly clear night. We'll call it pleasant in Dickinson. 48 west winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Throughout the region, eastern Montana, western North Dakota, cool with temperatures near 50 degrees. Hazleton at 55. For Minot and Bismarck tomorrow, again, there's maybe that slight chance for a shower. Highs in the mid to upper 70s. West winds up to 20 miles per hour. Williston and Dickinson, again, a chance for a scattered shower. 74 in Williston, 75 in Dickinson. Eastern Montana for tomorrow. High temperatures in the possibly lower 80s in Miles City, but 70s elsewhere. 80 in Mobridge. Rugby at 71 degrees. So your seven-day forecast. Look Look at this for the weekend. Everything is lining up beautifully with highs in the lower 80s. And then the chance for severe thunderstorms will return Monday into Tuesday. So there's your first warned seven day forecast. But for right now, we are jumping for joy in the background at Kevin's Ultimate Backyard Barbecue. Monica, we have so much more to cover, and what a beautiful night it is for a barbecue. All right, looks great out there. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Coming up, some parents-to-be look through family lines or books to find a name for their baby, but not many find one while watching a baseball game. You're watching The Evening Report at 6 with anchors Monica Hannon and Alan Miller. First one weather with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lawrence and sports with Lee Timmerman. This is KFYR-TV, your news leader. That's it for now. See you back here at 10. More North Dakotans watch NBC North Dakota News than any other news organization in the state. Good evening. It was a confirmed tornado in Dickinson. Winds to 150 miles per hour. Dickinson dodged a bullet in one sense, but the mayor says there's plenty to clean up after last night's tornado. It takes a concerted effort to bring the light back to those who have plunged into darkness. And there's new money to reduce the number of obstacles for those with disabilities. You're watching the Night Report at 10 on NBC North Dakota News, your news leader. 
Good evening, I'm Alan Miller. And I'm Amanda Tetlack. Thanks for joining us. It doesn't make any real difference to those whose homes were damaged, but that was a tornado that ripped through the southern part of Dickinson last night. In fact, it was an EF3 tornado that caused all the damage. The National Weather Service went to Dickinson to evaluate and say the evidence was clear. Winds of up to 150 miles per hour uprooted trees, blew the roofs off homes, and ruptured some gas lines. Governor Hoven also went there where he met with National Guard soldiers assigned to help people clean up. State and city leaders say they're impressed to see how much work has already been done. I would also remind our citizens because there's much work to be done that they should continue to work safely. I know many of them are going to work long hours, they're going to be tired and uh, that we would encourage them to put safety first. He says he's thankful that no one was killed. Two people were treated and released from the hospital for minor tornado related injuries. If you didn't have power last night, but you are watching us now, you can thank the people in this next story. Linemen have been working around Dickinson and the surrounding areas all day, repairing miles upon miles of power lines that were damaged during last night's storm. Read the call, Glazier, talk with the crew to find out what it takes to turn the lights back on. High winds snapped power line poles on Highway 8 north of Richardson. There gets to be a lot of weight up there. The conductors get catching wind and pulling and... and uh... Nobody really knows, but when one goes and it just, it's a domino effect and until you find a good tough one to stop it all. While none of the actual lines broke when the poles went down, power had to be shut off and it can't come back until everything's finished. You got to deal with the old first and then put up, then put up the new, you know. So sometimes working with the new is easier than dealing with the old because everything's all messed up and tangled up and broke and hard to get apart. They're working as quickly as they can and here they say location is on their side. Crews say it's easier to do this job in the rural areas rather than in a city where there are traffic and onlookers to deal with. A lot of the public gets in the way as far as you know we're trying to get our jobs done and we got trucks tied up on the roads and they're on our way and people come around and like to take pictures and it's just nice out here, you know, we can we can get in where we got to get and get our job done. About a dozen people are working on this stretch of line. It's work they know customers appreciate. It's a gratifying deal when you can, you know, you look at all the damage done and you can come in here, put it back up. It makes you feel good to know that when you're done, the power goes back on, people get the lights on. It just makes it nice. And when they're done here, these men are heading to Dickinson, where there are more people who need power. Near Richardson, for NBC North Dakota News, I'm Rita Kalklazer. Crews have a little bit of experience with this particular stretch of power line. It had to be replaced about four years ago after another storm brought down a mile of poles. Well, if you lost your home or other belongings in the storm last night, there are a number of services available. The American Red Cross has set up a shelter at the Dickinson Armory. For free food and clothing, visit the Salvation Army at 615 West Broadway. And if you'll need long-term housing, call 255 9168. FEMA is assuring state leaders that federal assistance is also available to tornado victims. Many Stark County residents are already eligible for assistance under a flooding disaster declaration issued earlier this spring. FEMA says the same assistance will remain in effect for those hit by last night's storms. FEMA is also planning to open a disaster recovery center in Dickinson by this weekend. Representatives will be there to answer questions. For more information, call FEMA at 1-800-621-3362. Now, students, it's safe to do. Insurance agents suggest that homeowners in the path of the storm inspect their homes for damages and file a claim with their insurance company. Allstate Insurance says there are some things you, can't, you can be doing right away to make filing that claim as easy as possible. First, make sure your home is structurally safe and then make reasonable temporary repairs for which you can be reimbursed as part of your homeowner's policy. If your home is not safe to live in, review your policy to find out if your company will pick up additional living expenses. And always keep receipts you from purchases you make as a result of your damages. You know you're going to need a contractor if your roof is off, so start lining up contractors, make the calls, get them lined up. They're going to be very busy. Um, water damage, start, you know, tear up your carpet, get somebody over there to extract the water if possible. Get a hold of the local, you know, water removal guys. That it's also recommended that you notify any creditors if bil bills have been lost or if you're unable to pay them. Another band of severe storms rolled through last night, spawning funnel clouds and tornadoes near the Canadian border. Steve Keith farms in the western part of Sherwood and has lived through tornadoes before. When he awoke this morning, he found his wheat bins had been thrown to the ground and a tree toppled over. 
Keith has already called his insurance company, but says that it won't cover all the damage. Keith says his property damages are estimated at seven to ten thousand dollars. Of the twister, a building at Stallion Oil Field Services, which housed expensive equipment, was severely damaged. No one was in the building when the tornado hit. Early estimates placed damages between two hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. As technology develops, it becomes easier for people with disabilities to get around and live as normal a life as possible. The other thing that helps is money. The Olmstead Commission is responsible for state planning efforts that focus on serving people with disabilities in the least restrictive setting. Today was its first meeting since the legislative session, so there were plenty of changes and new funding to talk about. Bob Puyer has been living with multiple sclerosis for more than 50 years. In about half of that time, he's been in a wheelchair. He says one of the biggest challenges he faces is transportation. He and his wife haven't been able to travel outside of Bismarck for about three years. Fortunately in Bismarck we have a good transit system so I use that all the time when I travel uh, but I have trouble being able to uh, to get out of town because uh, you know we, I don't have a van that's particularly accessible. The Olmstead Commission says it's a common problem among people with disabilities, especially those living in rural communities without a public transportation system. But this legislative session, lawmakers passed a bill that will allow the Department of Human Services to work with the Department of Transportation to start a trial transit system across the state. The people who are living in rural North Dakota can, we can pool our efforts to get them um, into more urban communities for either you know doctor's visits, optometry visits, um, even just other kind of uh, errands they have to run or whatever. The legislature also increased the Department of Human Services funding for home and community-based services by about 55 percent. And Bob says it's reassuring to know someone is listening to his needs. It will make life easier for, for a lot of us. In, in, in the future. The Department of Human Services also received $84 million in federal stimulus money. A good portion will be used in Medicaid funded services. Well, it seems nice to take a little break from severe weather tonight, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, it sure does tonight, guys. No doubts. It looks like we've got a break for several more days and then probably more severe weather in here by early next week. But let's get right to our Sky Spy slideshow. Many new photos to pass along. Pat Whitlock, tracking the storms as they were west toward Medora yesterday in the evening. This storm actually was not the same one that came through Dickinson, but this next photo is the only one I have of the tornado itself that hit South Dickinson. Little fuzzy, but rightfully so considering it happened so close. That is so close right there. Chris, thank you very much for that Sky Spy photo. You can log on to our websites right now, and it is the main photo on the main page and in the weather section as well. An amazing storm, EF3 tornado, winds to 150 miles per hour. The Weather Service has classified that as obviously a tornado. An EF3 is somewhat rare in North Dakota, but nonetheless, it happened last night on the south side of Dickinson. Again, look at all of the damage here. The assessments will continue and a dollar amount uh, coming out soon, but uh, let's hope we don't see a scene like this again anytime soon. And of course, as Alan mentioned, that uh, other parts of the state had tornadoes as well, west of Williston, up in Burke County. So it was quite an active night throughout the first warm viewing area. And Weather Call did alert in the Dickinson area over 100 subscribers of the tornado warning as the sirens began to blow and phone calls were sent out via Weather Call before the tornado hit. And this, a distant thunderstorm over Lemon, South Dakota. It produced baseball size hail in Lemon, not a tornado, but a lot of damage in Lemon, South Dakota. Sky Spies, thank you all for all of those photos, many more to, uh, that we, we, we have received, and many also on our website. Now, radar and satellite, not much happening for tonight, mostly clear skies, although Perhaps a couple of showers in southeast Montana, maybe into portions of northeast Wyoming as well. 
into the night. We are going to see a couple of showers maybe in the northern South Dakota, but no severe weather is expected for tonight. Great news at that. Temperature is actually cooling off. Dickinson 58, 71 in Bismarck, 63 in Williston, Sydney at 66 with Baker, 70 in Fargo and in Devils Lake. Sherwood 63, Keefe at 62, Lincoln still at 70 degrees, Bainville 65, Weibo at 64, Grassy Butte 61, 66 in Gackle. Sky Spies again, thank you very much for all of the photos. Over 75 photos received via our Sky Spies and, uh, on the website, and many of those sent via email. And of course, for the reports coming in tonight. Putting our weather in motion, we are going to see again some scattered clouds increasing, a couple of light showers, not severe weather expected for our Friday or for the weekend as well. Again, maybe by early next week. 52 in Minot, 4 tonight, 53 in Bismarck, scattered clouds, upper 40s in Dickinson. West winds at 5 to 15, a mostly clear sky. We'll call it cool, but it's going to be somewhat refreshing by morning. Give the AC a break. It's not as humid as well. 75 in Minot, 77. Maybe a light shower in Bismarck. Low to mid 70s in Williston and Dickinson. A scattering of showers possible for tomorrow. But again, no severe weather. 77 in Bowman and in Hazleton. Mulbridge at 80 degrees. 76 in Hedinger. Seven day forecast. No severe weather for the next couple of days. We might see some. Actually, it's likely that someplace in North Dakota will see another round Monday or Tuesday, but not until then. So there is your week ahead. Several days of highs in the 80s, lows in the 40s and 50s. A couple of days to uh, catch up on some sleep. Yeah, you, I guess, right? Is this who we're talking about it's over been here? Quite a week for Charles and I, but you know what? That's okay. That's where you're. It's to. part of it, right? That certainly is. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Coming up, the homeless may not be visible in our community, but they are here. Advocates say they have an achievable goal to bring them all inside. And we've been telling you for months about the charity home. Today was the big payoff for a special organization. You're watching the Night Report at 10 with anchors Amanda Titlack and Alan Miller. First one weather with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lawrence and sports with Lee Timmerman. This is KFYR-TV, your news leader. Coming up on the Evening Report, day three of the cleanup begins in Dickinson after a devastating tornado rips through town. Swine flu is still a threat and now the state is getting money to help combat it. And riders are jumping on their hogs to help people with muscular dystrophy. You're watching the Evening Report Saturday on NBC North Dakota News, your news leader. Good evening and thanks for watching tonight. I'm Kevin Gribble. And I'm Maria Arceo. The EF3 tornado that hit Dickinson Wednesday night is long gone. Yes, it is, but the cleanup and repair efforts are just beginning, and that requires a lot of help. Scott Westerberg was in Dickinson today and is here now with more from the newsroom on how the community is coming together after the storm. Scott? Yeah, Kevin and Marie, even though it only took minutes for Wednesday night's tornado to rip through dozens of homes and businesses on the south side of Dickinson, the cleanup is going to take a lot longer than that. And to help with this recovery effort, Stark County Emergency Services is rounding up volunteers to get literally tons of debris away from houses and onto the streets where it can be hauled away. on the ground right now. We need people taking debris from the house and from the property and dragging it to the street so the National Guard, the, the private contractors and the city of Dickinson workers can remove it. The volunteers from all across the region met at the old Albertson store parking lot in Dickinson where they were put into groups and then assigned different neighborhoods in town to help. And as expected, plenty of those volunteers are from Dickinson and were there to do whatever they could to help their community begin to recover. Just people need help, you know, the the pictures on TV and stuff and all, you know, it just looks really bad. And if it happened to my house, I'd want people to help me too. So you know, it's for a good cause. El New at 10, we'll hear more about the recovery effort and all the volunteers, as well as hear from someone who's very grateful that so many people are willing to help after the storm. And Charles, I know the last thing these volunteers need is more severe weather. Does that look like that might be a problem in Dickinson this week? Well, not for the weekend. That's certainly good news. But later on this week, we could see some more severe weather, particularly early in the week, Monday night, particularly Monday afternoon into Monday night. 
and then stretching maybe into Tuesday as well. The Storm Prediction Center already looking at Monday afternoon into Monday night for a slight risk of severe weather across western and central North Dakota, South Dakota, and eastern Montana. But in the meantime, we are dealing with a few isolated thunder showers right now, mostly uh, dry for us, however, and we'll stay mostly dry through the weekend. If we can go to our Dickinson Skywatch camera pointed to the north and west, we do have a few stray showers in the Dickinson area right now, and you can see our camera pointed to the northwest. A few light thunder showers just off to the northwest. I haven't seen any lightning watching this over the past five minutes, but there could be a rumble of thunder. I'll get to that in just a minute. Kevin, Marie, so far though, pretty quiet today. Okay, thanks a lot, Charles. Well, swine flu is still operation. So by now, we've all seen the results of last week's tornado in Dickinson, but here's a unique perspective being seen here for the first time. It's dash camera video from a Dickinson police cruiser as it was heading into the storm on Wednesday night. It shows that our officers don't shy away from heading into a dangerous situation in order to keep all of us safe. Scott Westerberg has the story. Dickinson police made their way south through town as Wednesday night's severe weather let loose. But the sight and sound of heavy rain on the squad car quickly turned to the loud pounding of hail. Large and destructive hail. Officers sped south, barely able to see what's in front of them, and they warn each other of downed trees and power lines. Soon, the destruction left behind by the EF3 twister starts to become evident. As the officers shine their spotlight around this neighborhood and see the damage done to homes and businesses, the call goes out for search and rescue. Uh, we have to do some search and rescue stuff here. As the rain, hail, and wind begin to lighten up, the officers start checking around for injuries. Is everybody okay? Yes, everybody's okay. Okay. Yeah, stay inside. Yes, sir. And going door to door to homes with the most damage. Okay, everybody's fine here. Okay. Okay, just sit tight. We'll, we'll be with you in a bit. This dash cam video is the viewpoint of just one officer, but it paints a pretty clear picture of how this tornado changed so many lives in just a matter of minutes. And while no one was seriously injured, dozens of homes and businesses were destroyed. Well, Kevin, does it look like uh, we're starting our work week with some more rain? You know what? Rain and, uh, and then some. It looks like another round of severe weather on the way, Marie and Kevin, for tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. Will it be as it was this past Wednesday? Perhaps. It does look like another severe weather episode is on the way. Large and damaging hail, even a threat for tornadoes by tomorrow evening. In the meantime, we enjoyed today with a somewhat nice day, mostly cloudy at times, but we did manage to get highs in the 70s and lower 80s. Average high this time of year is 84, 77 in Bismarck, 85 in Baker, 77 in Jamestown and Fargo. Radar and satellite, not much happening in North Dakota right now, but we are tracking some thunderstorms, a few severe storms around the Billings area. These showers will gradually move into North Dakota, the far western fringes of North Dakota later on tonight, especially just after midnight. A few rumbles of thunder possible and a chance for some scattered showers and storms during the early morning over western North Dakota, maybe central portions of the state by noon, but I'm not so worried about that. It's what's coming tomorrow late afternoon from Montana again toward western North Dakota by early evening. It's that batch of storms that might be severe. Bismarck 67 right now, Mulbridge at 70, 67 in Williston, 72 in Sydney, Fargo at 65, 58 in Grand Forks. Most of us in the 60s and 70s. Our Sky Spies reporting the same. Lincoln 68, 67 in Cartwright, Bainville at 68. Thank you, Sky Spies. So let's focus on the here and what is to come for tonight. Again, clear skies becoming increasingly cloudy across North Dakota later on into the night. And then here comes a wave of thunderstorms early tomorrow morning by 6 o'clock. Again, most of western North Dakota showers and thunderstorms, a slight chance that these storms might be severe. But again, I'm not so worried about this. This will weaken. It's the next batch coming into eastern Montana and perhaps developing in northern South Dakota as well. Lots of instability moving into the northern plains. We'll see rounds of showers and severe thunderstorms likely again by tomorrow late afternoon into the evening. And this complex out of Montana will likely move southeast across North Dakota into the evening. So it looks like first eastern Montana during the mid to late afternoon, early evening far western of Dakota, including Williston and Dickinson, and then Minot to Bismarck to Mulbridge by the mid evening hours. 
Again, chances for severe thunderstorms. The Storm Prediction Center has at any one point a slight risk for severe weather. That includes isolated tornadoes, damaging hail, and damaging wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour. So yes, we might be going in that same direction once again. Let's hope it's just not the same areas. Let's obviously hope for no tornadoes at all. 54 in Minot, 4 tonight, 58 in Bismarck, a partly cloudy sky, winds east at 5 to 10, mid to upper 50s in Williston and Dickinson. And again, I've gotten the forecast that chance for isolated thunderstorms, especially after 2, 3 o'clock in the morning by sunrise, a few rumbles of thunder possible over eastern Montana and far western North Dakota. Overnight lows again, most areas in the upper 50s to the lower 60s. For tomorrow, a chance for thunderstorms may be making their way towards central North Dakota, Minot and Bismarck concluded by uh, mid to late morning, and then a severe round possible by evening. 77 in Bismarck, severe afternoon thunderstorms likely in Williston and Dickinson, with temperatures again, most areas topping out in the 70s, if not the 80s. Seven day forecast, after tomorrow night, really after Tuesday morning, the chance for severe weather greatly diminishes. Rather a breezy day on Wednesday. Winds might gust of 40 and then dry for the upcoming weekend. So at least we have that to look forward to. But in the meantime, tomorrow night, Tuesday morning, here we go again. Another round of severe weather. Somewhere in North Dakota, we will likely see severe storms with large and damaging hail and maybe tornadoes. Well, it'll keep you busy then. It certainly will. All right, thanks a lot. All right. Well, up next, big losses for North Dakota's College Save program. We'll tell you how much. And Congress is fuming over CIA operations that were kept a secret from them. Some are calling for criminal charges. You're watching The Night Report at 10 with anchors Kevin Gribble and Marie Arceo. First warm weather with meteorologist Charles Coe and sports with Bill Halter. This is KFYR-TV, your new...